Hey guys, out here on our house build in East Tennessee, and I wanted to share with you how we solved the problem of getting a cedar shake look on our house without actually using cedar shake. So I'm gonna show you how we just use a few different paint colors to take this hardy board from this to this. On the exterior of our house, we've been doing all of what you would call hardy board siding. It is a concrete composite, practically fireproof. It's very, very strong, very long lasting. But as you can see in our house plans, it calls for some really beautiful shake look up on the gables. So our plan was to do that with on the bottom board and batten of the hardy board. Cedar shakes don't always last very long in the sun. So we wanted to experiment with the idea of still using hardy board for that top gable, but we still wanted to get this awesome look that was in our original house blueprints. So I'm gonna show you exactly how we took just plain hardy board and brought it to life using three colors of paint. This is what the shake looks like when we first get it. And this is the end result. So step one, we ended up getting the best quality exterior paint we could. Obviously up a high on the side of a house, this is gonna be in direct sunlight. This is taking all of the elements. We didn't really want to cut cost on this. So we ended up going with the Sherwin-Williams Everlast. This is the highest quality exterior paint you can get at Lowe's. We did change up sheens a little bit. We went from just like the closest, I think it was maybe satin down to flat, but it has shown no difference. It's not a big difference. So, so we have three main colors that we're using for this method. Number one, is our dark brown, which is Java. Our medium brown is Jute. And our lighter brown tan, it's called Toasty. So these are our three. We got our light, dark, and our medium brown. We got everything covered up right now, but these are our three trays with our three different colors. I've got a small roller and a brush with each one. When we're all done, I always just wrap it up with a bag. Um, because if we're doing it a lot, it's a pain to pour it out, pour it back in, and you gotta redo your brushes and all that. If you seal it up and you close it up really good with a bag, and the air is sealed, it won't dry out. Now, when I first started, we did not do this inside crack. So this right here, you can kind of tell it's kind of brown in between there. You really have to just get in there with a brush and we did not do that at first. The first two sides, these are pretty white. We did try to get the bottoms because those show. And again, this is something that we kind of figured out as we went. Now on the front side, what I noticed was because it's a more visible side, it gets the afternoon sun. You see it as you drive up our driveway and you just look at it more. I was really noticing a lot of white pop out from in those cracks, which I did not like. So while we had the scaffolding up, I went up there with a brush and I touched up the cracks, which then made a stripe on the side and then I had to touch up the brushing. So it was kind of a pain. So with this last batch, what we're trying to do is we're going in with the brush first, getting it just a little bit darker so it's not that big pop of white and then going over it and doing our individual colors and doing the bottom. We've got our cracks, we've got our base coat. Step three is doing the dry brush on. So once all that is done, then we're taking a brush with a little bit of paint, just as flat as you can, and you're alternating the color and giving it some contrast. So if I'm on the Java, I'm gonna come back over it with the Jute or the Toasty. If I'm doing the Toasty, I'm gonna come back over it with the Jute or the Java. And picking which one, it just depends on how random you want it, how much you want the colors to blend with which one is side by side. So for example here, I had the Toasty next to the Jute. I decided to do more of a Jute on top of the Toasty and then a java on top of the jute to kind of blend these two a little bit. So I don't have a really bright and a really dark. I didn't want to darken this one too much, but I also don't want them to be too matchy matchy. I don't want them to look exactly the same. And then this one is the java base with some brush caught in there. Java base, the dark, and I did the lighter over top of it to lighten it up because I didn't want it really dark next to these two jutes. Okay, here's an example of one where I actually did some base colors that were the same beside each other. And you'll see how it ends up turning out okay, it's fine. So I did a Java base here and a Java base here. Um, and then I dry brushed them different. So I just put the jute over top of this one, I put the toasting on top of this one. And then over here I did the jute for the base and moved on. Um, and that way it, it doesn't look exactly the same. So you can do the same base beside each other. It doesn't have to be perfectly every other one. Um, again, the idea is just to mix and match and make it random. Don't get too caught up in a pattern. You kind of have to really think through this at first, but you get to the place where you just visually, you see it, you go, you do it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exact. Once you get it up there, occasionally you'll see something that kind of sticks out and you just have to look for that before you, you know, move your ladder or your scaffolding and you can go up there and touch it up and you're done. When we did our first wall, we were really careful about which one went up next to which one and trying to alternate the colors, but we really found that it didn't make that much difference. It was randomized enough. And honestly, you pay more attention to how it layers on top of it. And those colors stick out a little bit more than what's side by side. Even that, we just gotten where we just pop it up 
and if you do a good job of randomizing it on the shake and blending it fairly well then it comes out really nice. So you'll probably notice I'm not doing a lot of detail up here on the top of the shake because it's going to be covered up. Remember we are layering and sitting on top so the next shake will sit on it to right about here and it's going to be covered up. Now we do go ahead and do a base color all up here because again I don't really want the white showing through the crack. Right? It'll see, it helps to protect it, yes, but then also it helps for that white to not pop out. So we always do the base color from top to bottom just to give it that background color so it won't show through once we do layer it. But I'm not dry brushing all the way to the top and I'm, we're not even doing a lot of detail on our base color. Because again, as long as it's kind of got a little bit to give it a shadow underneath, it's fine. This paint is very expensive, so I'm not squeezing out every bit of my roller on these top edges like I am more so on the bottom. One more thing to make note of on the details of this, when we got our concrete composite shakes, this does actually have a wood grain on it. I don't think all hardy board comes that way. They have smooth or they have a wood grain texture. If it were just flat, I think it would be really hard to not make it look just like an actual paintbrush brush strokes. This way you can just catch that top level of it and it gives it more texture and more depth. Now that we've got our shakes painted, we move on to the install process. Uh, you could do this with ladders. You could maybe do this with a lift. We talked about all those possibilities. The way you have to layer up your shakes, you're really moving left to right all the way across the gable the entire time. And we realized that would be very difficult. We chose to move scaffolding, especially on our other side that actually has a little bit of a roof underneath it. A ladder would have been almost impossible there. So since we started on that side with our little roof, we have just built scaffolding and moved it with every gable section we're working on. So we assemble, do the job, disassemble. This allows us for the whole process to just have everything we need and go back and forth. So you'll notice in our design, it's not all shake across this gable. This is a very, very big gable. In the blueprints, it does call to break it up a little. So we are doing a combination of the green siding with the brown mixture shakes in there. With the shakes specifically, it's very important to get them very level and make sure you don't start going uphill or downhill. So you can use levels, you can do different things. We decided to use our Johnson laser level, which we're gonna show you in a separate video, specifically how we use that to draw lines and find really exact leveling measurements all the way across. That way we're not eyeballing it. We're not trusting, making sure we go from one level spot to the other. That way we don't get it up there and realize that things are starting to shift up or shift down. So once we've got our lines drawn, we know where our shakes are going, we've got our distances set up, then it's just a matter of getting it up there. We ended up doing a template for our edges. So we've got a right angle, flip it over, it does the left angle. And we did not do that for the first side and we really regretted it. We started that on our second side when we learned a few things and it made it go really, really fast. So for us, we have one to two people outside that are putting everything up on the wall, making measurements. One person that is right inside the window where we have our upstairs area and they're just measuring, making cuts, passing it out the window. And the times when we've gotten in a really good groove, we've gotten this done in a couple hours. We got our whole backside done on one Saturday morning where we just got into a rhythm and it went really smooth. We're putting one row, we're nailing above where it will be covered up. We're putting the next one over top of that. We do a base on the very bottom that gives you that dark brown underneath. That way it's completely sealed up. We have everything completely sided and covered and we went ahead and just painted that a dark brown to give it that darker color underneath those lines and those cracks. Of course, we're making sure to do some lath making sure everything is very sealed up around the windows as we're closing those in as well. Then once we get that done, we're just making sure everything's trimmed, sided, closing off the whole side, and then painting everything. So this is really in result. It will also look a little bit different as we get the bottom finished up. It's not trimmed and caulked yet and not painted. So once this bottom is green, it'll probably give it a much different effect. So we're very, very happy with how this turned out. We don't have to worry about the cedar not lasting. It's just got a little bit more texture and color to it than just throwing a plain color up there. Many of you have probably thought of this as you're watching this video, but there's another alternative option that would probably be easier than how we did this. And I'm sure you're also wondering, hey, what if you have to touch up? So an alternative option that we could have even done in the beginning and we could do in the future if we have issues with the paint wearing off would be to mark off and spray or roller brush the entire base, a new base color, a dark brown, a light brown, whichever, and then come back and do dry brushing 
and if you want multiple colors, go from there. Alternate your dry brushing, but just use the same base color. That would definitely give it a little less variety, but if it's already up there, there's pretty much no way to get these off without destroying them or damaging them in some way. So if you are under more time constraints, that would be a much faster way to do this and still get a really, really cool effect without just doing one plain color. So pick a nice base color you like, like with everything, give it a little test, see what different things look like on it. And you could even get three or maybe four different browns to go over top of it to give it a little more variety since you're using the same base color. We had a little more time on the ground and here and there to try this and do it and we really just wanted to see how it came out. I do want to do this big disclaimer that this was all Ryan's idea and Ryan's creation. He is definitely the creative person here. I'm doing the video, but this was his idea and I did not get it at first. It did not make sense to me. I didn't think it would look good when he showed me the sample shake, but obviously when it's all up there and it's put together, it looks fantastic. Now, Ryan is not right about everything all the time, but he is usually right about paint and painting techniques. He has done this for a living and he knows a lot about it and it shows. Check back later because we're gonna do full videos about our exteriors. We're gonna do a full video about using our Johnson laser level on this project. We're gonna do a video about all of our exteriors, tell you a lot more details about the hardy board, uh, the pros and cons, maybe some issues we had and things we really liked about it. And we wanna show you that fourth side that we haven't finished yet. So we'll show you some more video of that as well. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. If you have other paint techniques or suggestions you wanna to add too, make sure to throw it in the comments.